you there. Tuesday, February 6th. Let's talk NBA. Let's talk National Basketball Association. Yeah, I think so. NBA. So you've got the algorithm and you want to know how to use it because it's really complicated. Yeah, I hear you. The NBA algorithm is actually pretty complicated to run because there's a macro and things in here and there's toggle combo numbers and all kinds of crazy stuff that you're looking at. When you buy a copy, you get the most current version as of today. I want to show you that I had not paid attention to NBA for a long time. Before yesterday being Monday, I had not updated it since November 29th. That was over two months, right? We're looking at probably almost 70 days, 65 days that I'd gone without updating it. And I was able to just pick it up and bring in all the stats, what you need to do is you need to bring in odds from Rotowire. You need to bring in injury report from Rotowire. You need to bring in player stats from Rotowire. You need to bring in two sets of team stats. The advanced and then the basic goes right here. Okay. And that is basically what you need to update in this file every day. And then you refresh the injury pivot table. And then your games are already connected to the cube and you have the projections ready to look at right here. So you update those basically four, four pieces of information, injury report, odds, uh, player stats, and then the two sets of basic and advanced team stats from Rotowire. And you refresh this and you get a projection. You get things that say like, you know, in order, which teams are supposed to win. And while the Knicks are supposed to beat the Grizzlies tonight, there are enormous injuries on both of those teams, which make this a very risky game to play in either direction. Because when your team, look at how red that number is. When your team health number is essentially, you only have two thirds of your productive team members playing in the day, which both of these teams do. How can you predict a game like that where so many key people are out? And, and we can see that by looking through the injury report and saying, well, who do the Knicks have out? And are they really out or are they game time decisions? The answer is they're out. Mitchell Robinson, Quentin Grimes, Julius Randle, and OG. The OG is not playing. He's OUT today. So those are huge players, which is why anything can happen in that game. All right. But before we talk about all the other games in order, you know, I want to talk about combo numbers. There are many different combo numbers. There are a hundred different combination numbers that sort out and give you a prediction, including a predicted score. You could type in any number between one to a hundred and you're gonna get a different distribution of variables. It's giving you a slightly different prediction. So why do I put it on 69? And what do we do when we look past just one number as well? And I put it on 69 because I remember 69 winning. It was a good combination. It's this distribution over here. Um, th this one apparently did pretty well. Well, we don't have to guess though, which one will do the best. And what you need to do is you need to run the macro in this file and it will give you the information that you need. What do I mean by running the macro? I'll tell you what I mean. There's, there's a, a process in this file where, where it will test out the hundred different combinations that we have listed in different percentages for each factor. I, I wrote some code to create some different types of combinations. And this is, I, until it stops working, I, I, I would do more work on it, but it works very well. And here's what it does, is it wants to run all the games in a scenario builder. So it gives you a result each one of, uh, each one of the times it runs a sample prediction with the game and then it looks at the score and everything. And we're going to do that here in this video to get an idea if the order is this order. Because this is just one combination string. We'd like to see an average of all of them to give us a more interesting idea of the strengths between the teams. And I showed this the other day, but we need to actually run it because I need to show you how to run it. So here's what's going on. 
there's an area you need to identify that you are going to use to feed into the macro. In order to identify that area, that area has a name. It's called cube history. Right now, the cube history is a different area. It's not the area for today's games that we want to see. So we need to adjust the range. You do that by going to formula, name manager. We need to go into the cube history name and we need to go down here and we need to change the range. It should actually be, oops, it's very, very tough to do by hand because it wants to move. It should be this area here from the sixth to the end of the games right here. Then you press check mark. And now when we see the new cube history range, it's this new area of all the games that are, on, are today on February 6th. So that has become our range. Now that we've done that, we can get going. We can get going by checking to make sure we don't have any data here in the testing cube. We already cleared all the data out. So you go to view macro, View macro, run full 500. And when you press that, it is going to simulate all of today's games 100 times with 100 different distributions. And it's going to provide us a average of all of them that we can browse so that we have an idea. If we don't want to look at just one combo string, we now can look at the broader average of 100. And you could do this with thousands of combinations if you wanted to. Um, you could use more than just random distributions that I created that are just a random set of different distributions of the different categories. Or you could focus them and weight them. There's all kinds of things you can do in the combo testing sheet to give yourself different distributions. Um, but what I've done is, is working, so I, I haven't worked to, to make them any better. And we'll see if they work again today. 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. So what has happened is now we are, we're still looking at the main sheet where we look at our projections. What's here is combo number 100. It leaves you at combo number 100, which is the last one. So if we refresh, we get this look on combo number 100. That has two underdogs in Milwaukee and Orlando. Knicks winning, Oklahoma City, Minnesota, and then Dallas barely winning game where they're a little bit healthier, but both these teams are also injured as well down here. Now, generally I said combo number 69 was really good, so we're going to show what combo 69 is, which moves Orlando and Milwaukee up a little bit and makes this Houston game even more suspect, although Houston is a little injured. But anyway, that's one combo. Now let's go to look at the, the average of all of them. It's in the compare pivot sheet. So you refresh this table and what you're gonna get is you're gonna get the teams in order showing up at the top that it favors the most. And it's gonna show you every single combination string. What you do is you collapse this view of the team view and then we can start digging around and really looking at it because it gives you enough in this view of just all the teams. So we collapse the team and we get this. Here's what we get. We get an average margin overall that the team has. The higher, the better for that team. We get raw points scored. If you average in, like you sum up, I guess, all the points in the 100 games or something, it comes up with this number about how much they're supposed to score. I think that might even be the point differential or something. Yeah, it's the point differential between the two team scores. So higher number, the better, obviously. Now, what you end up seeing on this is, yeah, it favors the Knicks a lot, but we're, we're, we understand the Knicks are not a full, complete, healthy team. The opposite is true in that game. Everybody's super injured. So we're going to stay away from that game, but it does still think that they would they would win, but but we're not going to play it. I'm, I actually don't think the line is appropriate giving, given all these injuries. I know Memphis is also super injured, which is why it's like this, but it's just it's just a weird game. Let's go back to the compare pivot. In here, it has the thunder up here next at an average 17% margin, which is pretty good. Okay. So 
they, they are a very strong pick according to the algorithm. It also has Minnesota up here with a margin above 10%. That's still really good. In, in the NBA file, a margin above 10% is a really good margin. Like there's a disparity between these three teams and the rest of them here. So when it comes to teams that are really supposed to win, it's the Thunder and the Timberwolves that are crossing over that 10% margin. If you do a parlay, this is the only thing you do today, it would be these two teams, which would probably about, about double your money, I think. A little more than double your money on a parlay there. So that's where you would stop if you don't want to play the games that are closer. But if you want to take some information from these games that are closer, it does look like things like Orlando and Milwaukee are good straight bets or good plus the points because it has them winning. And even though the margin is fairly low, they're both healthy and you're getting good lines on both those games. It, it makes them bettable as straight bets. They're not going to win on a parlay all the time. You're probably going to win one and lose one. But if you do, you make money uh, because those lines are better than 100. So that's how you think about those two games. Then this Indiana game, they're probably going to win, but the line is out of whack. You can see that the odds makers have the Pacers all the way up here as the second pick of the day in terms of favorites. We just don't. And, and when we look at the compare pivot, where are they? They do cross ahead of the Bucks. Okay. So we do see this. This is kind of interesting. So the combo that we're looking at has the Bucks over the Pacers, but that's not what the overall average has. It has the Pacers over the Bucks. Okay. And it has the Magic at a 6.3, which means that if you only take one of these two teams, it's the magic that probably win because they're higher up on this list when it comes to margin and margin matters, right? And that's what this compare pivot is helping us with. So this, this, and this are pretty good. The line here is not great. I can see Milwaukee is really almost a toss up game down there. And then Dallas is also a toss up game. I was going to tell you to play Dallas here because they do have an injury advantage over Booker, but this game is just too close. And the compare pivot agrees with that. So it's really these three teams that are pretty solid. Um, and you can consider Milwaukee. You can consider them plus the four and a half points, I guess. Uh, but that that's the breakdown. That's how you run the macro in this file and get some in-depth information on the day's games. And... Um, I know you'll have a lot of questions, a complicated file. There are a lot of videos out there, but that, that's the basic crux of it. You update the sheets with the stats, and then you run the macro if you want to, to get a more advanced look, or you just choose a combination string number and go with it. Because you do have to choose just one when you're, when you're freezing any results. You have to be like, well, which combo did we use? The way to find out which the best one is, is when we put the results in, and then you run the macro again, it will show you how many wins and losses you had with each combo. And I, I could do that and run it again, but I just don't feel like it in this video. But that will help you determine which combo did the best, and then you can piggyback on that combo number and try it for the next day. And so you can always, you know, that's why combo number 69 had been good. And it, it did win yesterday. If you look at what yesterday's games are, you can see that it, it went, goes five and one, but another combo string would have a different result. Combo string number two, for example, also goes five and one. I mean, a lot of these are going to go five and one because the games were very predictable. Yeah, but you can see it changes around, right? So while you do need to pick a combo number for simulations to, to look at the game in a snapshot form of just one score of the game, you have the ability to look at the averages here. And those are also valuable. All right. So that's the breakdown of the NBA algorithm. It's complicated, uh, but it's only 50 bucks. And if you want to follow NBA, this certainly is going to give you a way to aggregate all that information productively and um, been nothing but, but happy comments. People working with the NBA file it doesn't, you know, nothing wins every day, but it, it's going to do the best it can with the information that's available and using the injury report extensively understanding who's in and out is an integral part of predicting games here. Uh, it is so important. Uh, I mean, just to see this up top, like I won't be surprised if Memphis somehow beats the Knicks tonight 
at, at a ridiculous line simply because there's so many injuries here. I know you cannot predict a game with a number with an injury number of 64 percent. And those people were out. I mean, I looked at both those teams. Everybody's out. They're not even game time decisions there. Those people are out. So you've got, you know, a little more than half the New York Knicks against a little more than half of the Grizzlies. Half of the Grizzlies sounds tough. You never know. All right. Good luck, everyone. Mail your picks be winning. Enjoy the NBA algorithm if you have one. And if you want to buy one, they're 50 bucks. You can go buy one. I'll send it to you. All right. Good luck. Mail your picks be winning.